Hello students and welcome to our continuing lesson on sinusoids and sinusoidal functions. Um, last time we looked at the sine function, f of theta equals sine of theta. Today, or in this video, let's take a look at the uh, cosine function. And um, I just want to sort of clarify a little bit what I said on the previous video so that we are all on the same page. Um, here, when I said maximum points occur at, and this I should really say theta equals, okay? Because the max themselves are one, the min is negative one, there's only one max, point, max value, but the maximum points occur infinitely often when theta equals any of those numbers. Uh, along those same lines, the minimum points occur at theta equals any of these values, okay? And the zeros occur at when theta equals any of these values down here. So there's a difference between the points themselves, which there are infinitely many, this point here, this point here, and further down the, the, the graph, and the maximum values, which is, there's only one maximum value, that's one. There's only one minimum value, that's negative one, but it occurs um, infinite, an infinite number of times. So with that in mind, we can take a look, and I'm going to keep the sine function nearby here, and let's take a look at the cosine function. And I'm going to try to line up the axes here as best as I can, make sure my ruler lines up so the axes line up here. Okay. And comparing the two, you can see that sine occurs, uh, sine starts out at 0, 0, while cosine starts out at 0, 1. And then when sine reaches its maximum up here, cosine reaches its zero. When cosine reaches its zero, cosine reaches its minimum. And there are sort of these like slightly off um, type of types of symmetry where it looks like there's some things that's happening here at the same spot, but it's not exactly the same thing because cosine and sine they look very much similar. They're both uh, they're both waves but the waves behave a little bit differently. And so let's see, and I'm gonna take the sine function away for a moment here so we can focus entirely on the cosine functions. So if we look at cosine, we can see a similar pattern that occurs there. So let me label here, this is zero, zero, of course. This is pi over two. This here is pi at 180 degrees, three pi over two. 2 pi, then uh, 5 pi over 2, and this is negative pi over 2 back here. Okay. And we can see a similar pattern emerge where the wave repeats itself. So if I look at the maximum point here at 0, the next maximum point occurs at 2 pi. So you can look up here, and I'm just going to connect these two ideas together, where we can see that the maximum and the maximum here uh, it repeats every two pi units, or the units in this case is radian. Okay. And same thing with the minimum, they repeat every two pi. This is pi over here, this is three pi at this minimum point. So that also repeats. And you can, now you have to be careful with the zero because the zeros actually occur twice for every single cycle, but um, the max and the min um, only occur once for every single cycle. And we can label in some of the same um, points here before. So the maximum point is 0, 1. And here we have 2 pi and 1. Those are the points. The minimum occurs at pi, negative 1. And over here at 3 pi, negative 1 and also over here at negative, whoops, negative pi, negative one. Okay. So the max value is positive one. Oh. The minimum value is at negative one, just like the sine function, but the points where these, va these max and min occurs is a little bit different. So we can say for the, um, for the cosine function is that max values occur when theta is equal to zero, 
2 pi and 4 pi and so on. So, so 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, and so on. Okay, in other words, what this is saying is even uh, multiples of pi. And that makes sense when you look at our unit circle. Let's just see if we can make some sense of it. Where is the max value for cosine? Cosine, remember, being the x value on the unit circle. Well, it occurs here at 0. And then you go all the way around. It occurs again at 2 pi. And then all the way around. And that's 2 pi again. Um, so that's 4 pi altogether. So it's 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, and onward. So this is where the maximum values occur. As far as the minimum values, what well, it occurs at pi, and then 3 pi, and then you can probably guess that the next one is um, 5 pi. So minimum values occur at theta equals pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, and also same thing for the negative direction, negative pi, negative 3 pi, Okay, or odd multiples, odd multiples of pi. And finally, let's look at the zeros. Where do the zeros occur? Well, it occurs at pi over 2. I'll write it down here. Um, let me use a different color here. So we can say that zeros occur at where theta is equal to 0, pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and so on. Okay, or we can say that this is odd uh, multiples of pi over 2. So this is where the zeros occur. And you know you don't have to try and memorize all these rules. That's, that's really going to make you go insane here. Um, but the idea is that there's a pattern to all of this. And if you want to find the pattern, the best way to do it is not to try to memorize the rules, but to think back to the unit circle, because that's where the that's where this all is really coming from. Okay, so the zero. So where is cosine zero? Well, up here, that's pi over two. Down here, that's three pi over two. And if you go all the way around, two pi, that's five pi over two, seven pi over two, and so on. Okay, so if you just think about this uh, logically in terms of using the unit circle, um, it's 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 fairly straightforward to figure out what these values are for the zeros, for the minimum values, and for the maximum values where they occur. Okay. And then we can also kind of compare the two of them. And again, just to illustrate the fact that they're very similar, but they're a little bit off. They're not quite the exact same function. They're both waves, um, but they're, the waves are kind of offset. So if I take cosine and I shift it a little bit, uh, now I have the same thing as the sine. So this is cosine here on the bottom and sine on the top. But if I take the cosine and I slide it over just a little bit, I have the same thing as a sine function. Okay, so in another video, we are going to explore the relationship between sine and cosine. Um, but we'll leave, end this video right here. And um, we'll pick up with definitions of sinusoidal amplitude, period, frequency, and so on.